I'm thinking I might need glasses, so I, ha I had to make my font a little bigger. So. <laughs> so here we go. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for just being here. And um, I'm going to wrap up Capstone Day for the class of 2018. Yeah. So my name is Hannah, and I'm going to thank Dr. Hartman at the beginning and at the end. So thank you <laughs> for obvious reasons. Um, here's an outline of what I'll be discussing today. So for children who are deaf or hard of hearing, early detection matters. It matters, guys. I know you agree with me. So um, Kayla touched on the Joint Committee on Infant Hearing, the JCIH position statement. And that's that um, children should be screened by one month, identified by three months, and enrolled in early intervention by six months of age. So in Wisconsin, this um, is the newest report from um, the Wisconsin Sound Beginnings, and it's the data from 2015. So we can see here that in 2015, 66,350 babies were born. 1,819 did not pass their first screen, and 394 received diagnostic audiology, or they um, didn't pass that second screen. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about where we are with those 136 goals. We're going to look at the percent of babies that achieve the 136 goals on time from the most recent report. So 98% of babies were screened by one month of age, and you can see that that's that lovely, um, beautiful, high gold bar across the top. 52% of babies were diagnosed with a permanent hearing loss by three months of age, and that's um, a permanent, like sensory neural, permanent hearing loss. Okay, that's the, the middle red line. And then 36% of babies were enrolled in Part C intervention. And Part C, that's the intervention <coughs> program that we have um, by six months of age. So we can see that that is the blue line, and that's also a little lower. So what's bolded there in red, that's what I'm going to focus on today. So we've probably heard many times that although we're doing fairly well um, with our goals in the state of Wisconsin with the the first month screen, we do have a lot of work to do on those other two goals. So, you know, why are some children not getting identified in time by the three month? So through an extensive literature search and also talking with different state stakeholders and national state stakeholders on this topic, um, some of the ideas proposed was limited access to pediatric audiologists, so long wait times for appointments kind of go together, other medical conditions for the child, unilateral hearing loss, uh, physicians taking the weighted out approach to follow-up care, having no consistent protocols, and then inconsistent provider knowledge. Also that information gap between different providers. So some believe that people are not adhering to best practice guidelines, and some people have suggested that we need kind of a more specific guides regarding this, and how can we work together? So one solution, just an ah for the babies, um, that has been proposed is for states to have their own pediatric guidelines. So we have some national guides. For example, the American Academy of Audiology has a beautiful, extensive guideline that you can all look up and download, I suggested. But um, we did know that some states are also developing their own guides. We just didn't know kind of, you know, what are the thoughts on this? How's it going? Are there any specifics you can share about why you did this? And so um, that's why we're here. So our main research goal was to get a gauge at what other states are or are not doing in regards to pediatric audiology guidelines. We were especially interested because we're in the process of developing our own using that collaboration between the University of Wisconsin, state stakeholders, and the state EDI program. So now let's delve a little bit into our research specifically. The methods of the national survey had two parts, and the first part was developing the survey. Um, and this was used through expert advice and consultations. We also use our national guides and organizations, specifically the um, American Academy of Audiology guidelines that I mentioned. So the second part of our methods was the actual distribution of the survey. And this was done um, using Qualtrics, specifically the University of Wisconsin Qualtrics. The survey was sent through email to all 50 state EDI coordinators. Now let's discuss the survey itself. Hold on to your seats. The survey consisted of eight questions that used expert advice and appropriate feedback from audiologists in the state of Wisconsin and the EDI coordinator of Wisconsin. So we got a, 70, or we got a response rate of 72%, 
So 36 of the 50 states did respond to the survey. Yay. So um, here are some of the states that responded and gave us their names specifically. So they noted in our survey where they were reporting from. All those lovely stars. So thank you, states. So a little bit more specific on the question. So our first question looked at the big picture of does your state have pediatric audiology guidelines or not? This was a yes-no question, and the total number of yes-no responses are shown. So we can see that 21 states do have guidelines and 13 do not. Let's look at the 13 for a second. So if no, are there any plans to develop them in the future? This was a mix of a forced choice and an open-ended question. The data shows that over half currently are developing or believe guidelines are important. If you want the slides, hit me up later. So then we looked at what percentage of children in your state have a confirmed hearing loss or hearing status by that three-month time frame. Remember what we said in Wisconsin, that the average hovers around 50%, and that is um, actually pretty close to what we saw in the literature review and the national numbers that are currently published. So a good proportion of the states um, are hovering around the 50. So the good news, though, is that some are reporting that they are above you know, 61%. Here's a note. If the question was more specific about addressing permanent sensory no hearing loss, then that actually would be a much smaller number reported. They were really caught by the three month time frame. So a lot of states, um, their EDI programs report everything, so conductive, normal, transient, and the sensory neural. So just something to note, and um, I would have, I'll change for next time, or would have changed. Next we looked at, what do you believe are some of the reasons children in your state do not have a diagnosis by three months? So trends from the data were multiple rescreens deviations from best uh, practice, and then just a general lack of pediatric audiologists available, long wait times, and these are similar to some of the results that I discussed earlier. Then we went a little bit deeper into our questions and we asked, if you have pediatric audiology guidelines, do you think that they have improved your state's percentage of children with a confirmed hearing loss or hearing status by the three months? The majority of the data found yes. We have guidelines and have seen an increase in the percentage with a confirmed hearing loss or hearing status by three months of age. This question really was addressing if they have guidelines, have they noticed a change in the crucial time frame? Check out the top bar. Next, we looked at if you have guidelines or are developing them, what's your reasoning? Hoping to lower the age of confirmation of hearing loss was 19%. Wanting to increase the number of children who are confirmed appropriately by three months time frame was 12%. And then the standardization improvement of diagnostic pediatric audiology services was over half of the responses. So that's me combining that 32 and 30 right there. Here's the big kicker. Do you feel the guidelines will add value to your state EDI program? An overwhelming number of respondents said yes, they see a value in pediatric audiology guidelines. Finally, in our last question, um, how did or will your program disseminate the guidelines? So it's not just enough to make them, but let's think like next step. So um, I'm going to just kind of summarize with you. So through the Academy of um, Audiologists in their respective states, the doctoral prog programs of audiology through email, email specifically targeting um, hearing professions and professionals, through advisory committee meetings, webinars, handouts, including in their newborn hearing screening training manuals, so combining um, the professionals in the hearing world, and then also specifically EDI programs was mentioned. And then um, the state health department, and also having that on the state website, allowing it to be accessible to other professionals. And like, when I say other professionals, I mean a lot of big pediatric centers. So now, what are the practice implications of this research? So guidelines are believed to decrease the time to identification of permanent hearing loss or have some impact. Another practice implication is that EDI coordinators express that pediatric audiology guidelines can bring value to help pediatric audiologists and maybe even other professionals to better understand the possible supports to clinical practice in a hearing status confirmation. Some future directions, where are we going? So first, I just want you to keep in mind that our results do have limitations. 
One of those limitations um, is that many of the eddy coordinators said that they believe it would decrease the time to identification, but we did not get specific data on that because we're not able to look directly at their states for that, the hard numbers at this time. Maybe in the future, but right now, um, just getting their state names, that was a great accomplishment in working together. So we are continuing to develop the Wisconsin Pediatric Audiology Guidelines, um, introduction slides to come, with the goal of guiding professionals in the diagnosis of hearing loss with follow-up audiological assessments. Um, we're going to further define and assess the need for guidelines. And lastly, define a quality improvement project to assess the effectiveness of guidelines once they're implemented, so thinking next steps as well. Here's a glimpse of the pediatric audiology guidelines for ages 0 to 3 in the state of Wisconsin. So we're thinking about evaluation, birth to 6 months, and um, developmental age of 6 to 36 months. Next, um, the diagnostic results and interpretations. So all of those will be addressed as well. Is there any questions? So I right. So I did do an extensive um, literature search about two years ago, um, very very extensive, and found that some states. So when I did that, it was 24 at the time, and then when I looked again, it was another 16. So the hard part about that is that, um, and going to conferences, I think um, Dr. Hartman can relate to this that. When we're there talking about this, states are coming up to us and say, hey, we're doing that, or hey, we have something published here, but it's not really done, or, you know. So I, I could totally reach out to individual states and see if they would be receptive. But a lot of that feedback was coming just from being out there and really trying to find, like, published ones. I could only find 16, like, full ones, and then about 24 total that I knew that were doing something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they vary a lot. Yeah, they really do. Um, so, you know, they do vary. So that's why when we were developing ours, we really had to talk um, and figure out, you know, what is, what are we going to say? Like, you know, what is most important? So that's why we had to bring in a lot of different stakeholders, taking many years to develop these, really thinking about how implementation would happen, because the varying is great. Some page, some states two pages, some like 16 pages. Um, our national ones, 56 pages if you're curious. So, you know, um, it just really varies quite a bit. And also I think too, like the reasons why they did them. So some of them it was, um, you know, just kind of like a quick and dirty, here we go. And they have something else to supplement in their big pediatric centers. And then other places it seemed like their pediatric audiologists were really, really spread out. So those states, seemed, at least when I did the, the lit review and the search for it, they needed a more comprehensive. Okay, yay! Thank you. Thank you.